Aloha, welcome to Think Tech Kauai in today's show, Life and the Law. And I have two guests, two young lawyers, Justine Herrera and Emily Brisky, who are both staff attorneys at Volunteer Legal Services Hawaii, otherwise known as VLSH. Thanks so, so much welcome. for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us today. So Justine, let's start with you. Tell us a little yes. bit about VLSH. Well, Volunteer Legal Services, we're celebrating our 35th anniversary this year. Um, we're a nonprofit organization that provides civil legal services to low to moderate income individuals. And how we do that is by connecting attorneys who are volunteering their time pro bono, and we connect them with individuals who need services in particular areas. So, for example, a client who needs family law help will match it with an attorney who specializes in family law. And pro bono, let's define for our audience. So pro bono is essentially just giving volunteering their time to give free legal services. So whether that may be just legal advice and counseling um, and providing with someone with directions as to where to go for their legal issue or actually going as far as actually representing individuals. So it can be, you know, appearing in court on their behalf and actually accepting their case on a pro bono basis, which means that they're not getting paid for their fees. They're not getting paid and the client is also not paying. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay, great. How long have you been, Emily, with um, VLSH? I've been with VLSH now for exactly a year. Oh, great. And Justine? I've been there for two years now. Okay. Well, I understand we're celebrating something this week. Could you tell us a little bit more about this Hawaii Pro Bono Celebration Week? Yes, and we're really excited to be a part of the National Pro Bono Celebration Week. Um, so it's a whole national event, but in Hawaii we take this week to really give thanks to all of the volunteers that give so much to the community. So tomorrow at the Supreme Court, um, there's a pro bono celebration uh, day where they are not only recognizing all the volunteers who um, do work at the access to justice rooms across the state and to the legal lines and all the other um, great you know, providers of nonprofit services to the community. Um, but we also got to recognize students in the community. Um, so actually uh, college students and high school students who have done um, volunteer work in the community. So we recognize them as well at Pro Bono Celebration. So is the Pro Bono that they're being celebrated about, is it re re only regarding law or is it any kind of pro bono? All kinds work? of pro bono. Um, the, the high school students who get recognized, they are getting recognized for their work at doing work at the Humane Society, um, pretty much all their volunteer activities. And so they actually are asked to write essays um, about what they've done in the community to, to help volunteers. So they get recognized for their volunteer efforts as well as lawyers getting recognized for all their pro bono work in the community. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. So this is a very newsworthy event then. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Will you be there? We will both be there yeah. mm -hmm. celebrating. We um, Volunteer Legal Services is recognizing one of our dedicated volunteer attorneys, Diane Mitsuyama, who's been volunteering with us for many, many years. Um, she's a great family law attorney and um, is currently the chair of the family law section this year. So she has been really instrumental in helping us get more family law attorneys involved with VLSH and really getting them um, in numbers out to volunteer. So the VLSH. Uh, organization has a few staff attorneys, you both, and how many other staff attorneys do you have? Well, we run on a very small staff. Um, there's a total of seven of us in office. Um, Emily, myself, um, our executive director and our pro bono coordinator are all attorneys as well. We have our veterans benefits attorney. She is not licensed in Hawaii, but is a licensed attorney in California. And then we have um, two intake staff. Uh -huh. And how many pro bono lawyers do you have across the state? And I assume all islands. Right? Yes, yes. We're very fortunate to have um, support from the neighbor islands as well as from Oahu. Um, currently, we have over 100 volunteer attorneys that are signed up to volunteer. And with this new project that we're launching, we are hoping to reach out to get more volunteer attorneys who maybe haven't been able to give their time um, in the same capacity of actually donating their physical time in office or on the phone lines. Um, we've developed a new pro bono model to help them um, hopefully be able to donate their time um, at home and in other different ways. Oh, great. So that's a perfect lead-in. <laughs> <laughs> so Emily, tell us about this exciting new yeah. project. So that. on Monday, actually, this past Monday, we launched Hawaii Online Pro Bono, and we're calling it HOP. And it is an online-based, it's based off of our clinic model, so our neighbor uh, island attorneys, as well as anyone else, can get involved. And it is internet-based, so no need to come to our office, either clients or attorneys, to donate their time. 
So it's very, um, very simple in that you just log on from anywhere at any time and you can type up your question and it's the same way for attorneys. They just log in from home or their office and they can answer any question they choose. Wow, I think we have some slides, so can we show yes. the first one? So this is our domain name. It's hawaii.freelegalanswers.org and as long as you don't type www in front of it, it will mm -hmm. take you to the correct page. And if we want to go to the next slide, it'll show what our homepage looks like. H-O-P. <laughs> the next slide, we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. It's also it's important to um, recognize that this, um, this new project, HOP, is also a part of the American Bar Association. So this is a whole national program um, that's being launched across, I believe, 40 jurisdictions um, yep. are part of this program. Um, and as you can tell from the top part of the screen, it says ABA Free Legal Answers. So that is the national uh, domain name, and we're at hawaii.freelegalanswers.org. Okay, so what we're looking at right now, it says get free legal answers, get started, sign in. So we can get to that page by going to the website. Yep, and if you're a volunteer looking to register, you'll have to go all the way up to the top of the page and where it says volunteer attorney registration. And it's pretty simple to register both as a client, a user, and an attorney. Um, you just follow the steps. We have uh, our screenshots in the next couple of slides show exactly how to do that. So do the attorneys, uh, are they screened in any way or can any attorney just... As long as in? you're an active uh, or... Because oh, you can be inactive pro bono as well. As long as you're an attorney in good standing in the state of Hawaii um, and you sign up through us, I just have to make sure that you are actually in good standing and I will... Um, authorize you to use our website. Okay, okay. so then there are two steps for an attorney. First, yes. the attorney contacts PLSH to register yep. as a pro bono attorney yep. in the state. Well, you just register right on the website, assuming you're active. But if you're inactive, it then we have to go through a process and file the correct affidavit to make sure that you're, um, in, you're changed to inactive pro bono. And is there a specialty of law, for instance, family law or immigration, that we have to identify? The We're always going to be in dire need of family law attorneys to volunteer with us because that's typically um, one of our most common questions and to of topics that come up. Um, but any attorney is encouraged to volunteer. Uh, the nice thing about Hawaii Online Pro Bono is that the volunteers have plenty of time to research their answers. So if you're new to pro bono, for instance, and you know maybe you do transactional law, there might be questions about landlord-tenant or collections that you can research and figure out how to answer those questions appropriately on your own time. So the, it takes the pressure off a little bit from exactly how or from an in-person, face-to-face setting. Right. Except that, so the client then will uh, log on mm -hmm. and have a landlord-tenant question, uh, key in the question. Uh, be matched with an attorney? Um, the attorney will actually get to pick the question by themselves. So the I attorney see. themselves is doing the matching. So the question will be, or the question goes live as soon as the user posts it and the attorneys can log in at any time uh, and see the questions that have been asked. And then you can go through the queue and choose which question you want to answer. So you're actually allowed, you're able to see the opposing parties, the legal topic, and a pre the question itself before you choose to answer it. That way you're only ch picking questions that you feel are appropriate for yourself to answer. So are you, as the project, I understand you're the project yeah. manager and developed the program yeah. in Hawaii. Are you in any way mm, helping to match or screen the Absolutely. questions? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, my job in the behind the scenes is to make sure that the questions being asked are appropriately categorized and are appropriate for this site. So for instance, if someone asks a question like, uh, I want to get divorced. That's not really a question. So that person is going to be contacted by me to let them, or set them on the right path to asking a question about divorce and specifically what kind of question do they have about getting divorced rather than just saying that. Because that's not going to, it's not a question one and it's not really attractive for an attorney to pick. So my job is going to be trying to flush those out and make sure that the questions are appropriate so attorneys actually want to answer them. And I have that capability to communicate back and forth with the users. Uh, to By make telephone? Uh, nope, it's all online. 
So they'll get an email from me and that I really think that takes down a big barrier of communication that we have with a lot of our Outer Island clients is communicating with, with them on demand by email. Um, so a lot of times we have a hard time reaching our clients by phone and have to leave voicemails and play phone tag. So that email component, they can get to it when they, when they get it. Um, so, and they're still getting that same information, but then once their questions are updated and asked appropriately, they'll be able to, hopefully an attorney would be more likely to answer it then. I see. And so uh, these questions then, if they're very complicated, um, how does that Those get processed? Have, this is mostly going to be a starting point. So if it's a complicated question that might be beyond the scope of what this uh, website is designed for, this website is designed to really be a starting point. It's not supposed to replace in-person, face-to-face um, legal advice. There's nothing can replace that. So this is more designed for people, especially in rural areas, that it might take two hours to drive to the access to justice room. And they really have no idea where to start. So instead of driving two hours and being frustrated because they didn't get, they weren't ready or they didn't know what to ask or they didn't have the forms filled out, they can start by going to HOP and asking their question from their home or a local library. And you know, and a volunteer can come in and say, here's the form, this is where you, how to get started, this is what you need to do to start the divorce process. So then by the time they are making that appointment at the access to justice room, they're going to get their forms reviewed. Or by the time they're having an appointment on the phone with a volunteer legal services attorney, their, their phone calls a lot, their appointments a lot more worthwhile. Right, efficient. So once the uh, volunteer lawyer is matched with the client online, can the client continue to work with that volunteer lawyer once yeah. it gets more complex? Well, and that's where we're hoping to, we're still working that out, but we're hoping to be able to just refer them over to either legal aid or volunteer legal services to further that relationship. But as far as like the, the way it's set up right now is you can communicate back and forth between the user as well as the attorney. So if you need further information to answer the question, you just have to ask the user to follow, or you just follow up with the user and you can also ask them to upload documents or pictures if you need information regarding their court documents or something like that. And then as an attorney, you have complete control over when that uh, relationship ends. So whether that's going back and forth three or four times or you know it's gotten to a point where you, they need to be referred, then I'm hoping that I'll be able to catch that on my end or that the attorney says, hey, this needs to be referred, this person needs full representation, and then we'll go from there at VLSH. Great, well, this is really exciting yeah. program. We're gonna go for a short break and we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about the access to justice rooms and a little bit more about HOP. Okay. We'll be right back. This is Carol Mon Lee, Life in the Law with my guests Justine and Emily from VLSH. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Carol Mon Lee, Life in the Law, with my guests Justine and Emily from VLSH, and we're talking about an exciting new program called HOP. So just before we went to break, Emily, you mentioned the access to justice rooms on the neighbor islands and in Oahu, and I'm thinking our viewers may not know what that is. So Justine, can yeah. you tell us about those? So the access to justice rooms, or we call it the ATJ rooms, are a program that was actually um, brought out by the Access to Justice Commission. And it was originally founded as an idea from the Equal Justice Conference, which is a national conference. 
Um, and what they are, they're self-help rooms. They're rooms where we have volunteer attorneys, and it's run through the Hawaii State Bar Association um, in connection with the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii. And they have volunteer attorneys and law firms that adopt certain months or weeks out of the year to actually donate their time and their associates to these rooms, um, or in certain outer islands desks, to actually provide um, available services for people in the courthouse. So it's really meant for people who are coming straight out of a court hearing, maybe didn't quite understand what they needed to do next, can go talk to a volunteer attorney in person um, and get advice or information about where to go. Um, they're designed mainly at the courthouse for that purpose of providing civil legal services directly in the court building. There are no income qualifications because it's a court um, sanctioned program. So it's pretty much anyone at the courthouse who's lost may not know what they're doing. Receive some papers what is this about? Exactly. What do I have to do next? But it's only civil. It's only criminal. civil, yes. So um, right now they're located at the district court here in Honolulu, as well as there's one in family court in Kapolei, and there's one in each outer island um, from Kauai all the way to um, Hilo, uh, one also in Kona. So there's two on the big island. And they act as a place for people to just get assistance as to what to do next, where to go, um, and hopefully while they're still fresh in their mind as to the, what the judge just told them that they need to do. Um, so it's a way to kind of help bridge that step. And all of these different access to justice initiatives that have um, come out of the Access to Justice Commission in Hawaii have that goal of really providing civil legal services to individuals who really just don't know the legal process and don't speak the legal, legal language. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's various different projects and um, by adding in HOP into this mix, we're just providing a different platform. Um, and it's really meant to be for those outer island um, families and residents who don't have as easy access to heading down into Honolulu. You know, if you're coming from a uh, far side of the big island, driving up to Hilo or Kono could be two to three hours away. Um, and also it's important to note that the outer islands only provide legal information they at their self-help centers. They don't actually provide legal advice. And so they are restricted a little bit in their ability as to where they can go to get information. Um, and unfortunately, there isn't just, you know, a ready attorney available to answer their questions at all hours. Um, the self-help centers throughout the state are only limited to a couple hours a day and sometimes just a couple days a week. Um, so depending on what island you're on can really depend on what level of service and what kind of services you can get from the community. So we're really hoping to just keep expanding and to build on that to really give the community more options and more leeway into how they can get their civil legal questions answered. Right. But you mentioned information versus advice. So mm -hmm. is HOP giving information only or advice? Both. So uh -huh. we're definitely recruiting volunteer attorneys who are willing and able to provide legal advice mm -hmm. and counsel. We don't want to just limit that to information. We do have, you know, if that's all the person is asking about, that's great. But we w really are looking to provide at least a starting point for uh, legal advice. Right. Uh, Emily, tell us a little bit more about the background of HOP. I understand you, we had already talked about the American Bar Association. Um, yeah. So right. HOP actually started, well, Hawaii Online Pro Bono actually started in Tennessee, so of all places. It was uh, started by the Tennessee Alliance for Legal Services, or TALS, along with uh, Baker Donaldson in the state of Tennessee. It, that's a law firm there. And they... Uh, you know, they've been working on this for quite a while now. I wanted, they've been active for a couple years, for a year, maybe two. And they've had great success with it in Tennessee and decided that they wanted to, or other states decided that, hey, this is a great idea. Let's jump in. And You mean the model? Yeah. Well, and they, Baker Donaldson actually licensed uh, the software to all the other states. So we're, the ABA has gotten on board and they did all of the web development and they're providing all of the, the fancy website that you see. That's not us. Um, we're just providing the admin support um, behind the scenes and making sure that everything is marketed to Hawaii in an appropriate way and making sure that our volunteers are happy and as well as our users. Uh, but it is part of a national project. As Justine said, there's 40 jurisdictions that have adopted it. And we were part of the second wave when we launched it this past Monday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to having a lot of users get their questions answered. I'm not, I, I don't quote me on the numbers from Tennessee. I can provide them for you if you want to include them. No, in. but do you have a projection for Hawaii, what you look forward to 
seeing the response yeah maybe. I don't know what do you think Justine well you know we know that it's so hard for our rural services our rural islands to get services so we're really hoping that this will bring um, an increase in terms of outer island participants so we don't know exactly what that number is going to be but our goal is really just to do outreach on the neighbor islands with the help of the state libraries to really reach out to those rural areas that their only connection to an attorney may be picking up the phone and calling, and that may need, may not meet their needs. Um, and so we don't know specifically what that number is, but we hope that um, we can reach out to those rural communities and provide them services that they desperately need. So how does this? How is the state library involved? We mentioned the access to justice yes. rooms, and tell us about the state library. So the state libraries play a huge role, uh, mainly because those rural communities may not have internet or cell phone service, and so the closest place for them to get on a computer is the State Library. And so I know it's foreign to most people who may be watching this who have internet reg regularly available, um, but a lot of the outer islands are running on coconut wireless, and so they don't have access, um, like, all, like most of us here on Oahu, on your cell phone to have constant internet access. And so with the help of the State Libraries, not only are we going to get to do outreach with them at their computers, having display boards and signs about where they can go to log online to get information, but hopefully by working with the librarians, they can also um, filter questions that they may be getting as, as staff of the library and direct them to our website as an actual place where they can go and get answers to those questions. Great. You know, I think let's go through the rest of the slides. You know, yeah. some of them we may have already covered, uh, but uh, some of them had some interesting information. So. Yeah, so this is actually showing you what it looks like to register as a client user. And it's, we're just showing you exactly, this is targeted for low to moderate income individuals. So you do need to be income qualified to use the site. Um, for a family of four, that means you'll be making about $70,000 a year or about $5,800 a month. And it, you are also required to provide um, your liquid assets as you are also asset qualified. But there is no way for us to go and check this information. So this is a faith-based um, <coughs> questionnaire that we're having people fill out. Okay, thank you. Next. And so this is showing you what it actually looks like once you've registered as a user. So if you want to ask a new question, all you have to do is click ask a new question. And the ABA tech team um, created a very, very user-friendly website, intentionally making it as simple as possible for our users to actually use the website uh, because we don't, we don't need to make any further technology barriers in order for them to get legal assistance. Right. And I think the next slide, it'll show you actually what it looks like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. So here, um, it'll show you the different legal topics that we're currently covering. And we may expand these depending on uh, our volunteer attorney um, outreach. But these are the topic, the legal topics that we at BLSH cover and that we know we have volunteers willing and able to answer these types of questions. So again, it's very user friendly. It looks just like an email, an email right. text box. So we're just trying to keep it as simple as possible. And there's also places for them to put uh, legal deadlines as well as the opposing party for conflict checks. And they can also upload documents and photos for the attorney to look at too. Oh, so, so they have to scan them? Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll okay. be. And then, so in the case of like a landlord tenant issue where you might be having mold, um, you can actually upload a picture of what that mold looks like. And hopefully the, so I mean, it, it's helpful for the mm -hmm. attorney to be able to look at that. Sure, okay. And, uh, the next one, I believe, is shows what the actual, oh, so this is what an attorney will see once they're registered and log in. Um, so you can see that um, Justine and I have asked some sample questions, and it'll just show you uh, exactly what you'll see. And you can actually click into the question and read it before you pick the question, mm -hmm. which is really helpful to our new volunteers or those who might not be familiar with pro bono, um, so they're not getting in over their heads. Right. So you can actually just see what, is it something I'm capable of answering or researching in time? Okay, great. Um, so in terms of um, what's next for the HUP, are you going to be uh, reevaluating the program? Um, well, we just launched on Monday. Right? So right now we have, we've had a really, really outstanding response from the attorney community already registering. Uh, the number of attorneys that we've had registered this week alone has, I think we have 15 people who have already registered, which has been 
it, it exceeded what we were expecting. Wonderful. So and there, of course, they don't have to be on the same island. No, as and we've no. actually had uh, attorneys, out-of-state attorneys who are active in mm -hmm. the state of Hawaii who have, you know, moved away for whatever reason, but still want to give back, register. So that's been fantastic, too. Yeah, so this is a way for us to really expand our pro bono pool of volunteer attorneys, something we haven't been able to do before because we've been limited to in-person or over-the-phone consultations. Mm -hmm. So if they're located in California or in a different state, they want to continue to give back to the um, Hawaii community but haven't been able to, this gives them the perfect opportunity to be able to log on any time of the day, ask a question, answer a question, and and, and feel that they're giving back to the community. Great. Yeah. It's a, it sounds like a great gift yeah. to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what else is VLSH working on or doing besides the HOP? Have you been involved in other <laughs> projects and yes. activities? Always. I mean, we're <laughs> always looking for new initiatives um, to really help expand our mission of providing, you know, equal access to justice. And so HOP is just one of the starting points where we're hopping off from um, into other opportunities. Um, we have a pop-up legal clinic um, happening on November 4th in, I'm sorry, November 5th in Waianae. It's a Saturday. Um, we have over 15 volunteer attorneys scheduled to come with us to Waianae High School Cafeteria where they'll be meeting with um, over 50 clients who need services in a period of three hours. So it's a, so our pop-up legal clinics are a way for us to actually get into the community. So we pop into the community um, by usually using a cafeteria or some sort of public facility um, where we bring in our attorneys, we bring in our documents, we schedule appointments, and we provide services in the community to those who um, maybe live far enough out of town that driving into town you know, can become a hassle, especially if you're limited to public transportation. So do they have to make an appointment first? Yes. So we recommend appointments for this. We still have available appointments, um, but we always recommend that you call in advance to make sure that you can get a time to come in. Do we, we have a contact number or information? Our intake number? 534 528 oh, 528 7046 <laughs> that's correct <laughs> um, so they can call our intake line um, in order to get a scheduled appointment um, they can also walk in um, but we recommend that they call in advance just to make sure that we guarantee that they can see someone if they walk in okay great <laughs> That's very exciting. And how often do you do those uh, pop-up clinics? We try to get out into the community at least three times a year, if not four. This is going to be our third pop-up clinic of the year. Um, so we're really excited to be ending the year um, in Waianae. Uh, it's such a great community. It's such a privilege to bring out attorneys. Many of them do not travel to Waianae often. Um, so it's a great way to really get them involved in the community and provide services where some people may have gone to high school that they're coming back sure. later to actually get advice at. Great. Well, we're almost done, and I want you to take this opportunity to look into the camera and okay. tell our viewers again a little bit more about HOP, maybe particularly to the neighbor island viewers about how they can uh, access and um, be helped by you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, please sign up if you're a volunteer attorney or if you're an attorney out there licensed in Hawaii. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to give back to the community um, as well as do pro bono in your PJs is our slogan. <laughs> um, so you can do pro bono at any time. And if there's any individuals out there who may be watching this who may be interested in finding a way to get your answer, your questions answered online, please go to hawaii.freelegalanswers.org um, where you can post a question or as an attorney answer a question and give back to your community wonderful mm -hmm. Emily I think Justine covered it all <laughs> I, that's pretty much it hawaii.freelegalanswers.org and sign up and what's your phone number one last time um, our phone number is 808-528-7046 okay well thank you so much Emily oh thank you so much thank you Justine it's thank a wonderful you, project we look forward to the community being more uh, active in being able to be assisted by HOP and VLSH. Thank you so much. We'll see you all next time. And this is Carol Mon Lee, Think Tech Hawaii, Life in the Law. Aloha.